Hello friends, Host Eric here, Sergeant in the Type Police, and I'm here with Lieutenant or Corporal, I think you're Corporal, right? I forget your, mm -hmm. forget your rank, Corporal Bobamber, uh, and she and I are going after somebody who, you know, there's a lot of political capital down at the mayor's office pushing against this even investigation, this guy's well connected. I, I think there might be some corruption going on, but I guess in order to prove there's not corruption, they sent us out to investigate this fellow. He goes by a fairly famous name, and it rhymes with Mario Cardi. We'll find out who it is after this theme song. Try as you might, you just can't hide, because you're Miss Pike. And I've been waiting to pull you over all night. Type police, type police, please pull that guy over. He says he's my MTP, but seems extroverted, sensing to me. I think he's ESFP or type police. Welcome back to type police. So, who have you figured out who it is yet? That's right, it's Dario Nardi, that brain scan guy, as he's generally known. So, <laughs> Amber and I have both watched this ahead of time. We actually discussed it a little bit beforehand, but let's push play on this from about, let's say about a minute and a half. The beginning minute and a half is about introduction or so. And so let's see what he has to say and what he sounds like. I'm going to put it back to normal speed for a while first. Yeah, yeah. All right. So the first thing um, I want to talk about, and some of these are cliches, but I'd love to hear your opinion on it. The, you know, the big thing about NTs is how they are able to sort of conceptualize and manage vast systems, being very systemic in their thinking. Um, and that could be technologically, theoretically, uh, whatever. Uh, what do you, um, uh, uh, what does that mean to you? How does that show up in your life, systems thinking? Oh, God. Um, well, first of all, wonderful question wonderful question because I think that really does get at the heart of one of the the NT or uh, theorist or rational green whatever the terms are used um, skills that are out there talents and um, I think that uh, when I'm writing a book or uh, a computer program um, when I'm organizing something, like a conference or whatever it is, that I want to hold in mind all of the different elements at once. And, and it's sort of like juggling all of those things at the same time to make sure they all work out. So I'd say it, it might sort of be like one of those multivariable algebra problems where you have to solve for X, Y, and Z simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And that's uh, considering, you know, that they all sort of influence each other in some way and understand Okay, let's pause here at 2.49. So, he's talking about ideas in a way that might be construed as NI, sort of needing to have them be holistic, but which might equally be construed as an NETI understanding, where he's saying, I've got to keep the various parts in place, I've juggled in my head, and make sure I've, I've, I've considered the various vectors as they interact. Any thoughts on his epistemology? No, actually, could you clarify a little bit more how you see N, E, and T, I behaving like N, I? My brain's not working today. Well, it's, I mean, I'm not sure that's what I'm seeing here myself. So if it's a little bit confusing, it may be because it's wrong. But what I'm saying is the way he's conceptualizing ideation, he's saying I have to keep these multiple factors in mind at once. Now, that could be construed as taking the multiplicity and collapsing it into a whole that includes these multiple vectors, which would be an NI understanding of it. But it put, could be uh, perceived as a NETI understanding of it because in that sense, it's not really a whole. He's saying I've got to keep multiple separate things in play concurrently to understand this system, and that's what makes it complicated for me in the sense that on a TI level, it becomes a complicated set of conditionalities. So I, I guess I'm saying it's not determinant either way, but to me, right now, it rings a little bit more N-E-T-I than it does N-I. But let's see. 
Well, I think like ha even having a consciousness of there being different pieces enough that you could identify that, hey, I'm looking at different pieces does seem like maybe it would be more N.E. Okay, well, let's let him go for a bit longer and see what we see, because I should note that he self-identifies apparently as an INTJ. I'm taking that on faith. I don't have a... I don't have in front of me the thing that, that justifies that claim. Perhaps it's in this video, even, but uh, this is from a tipster who says he self-identifies as INTJ. Right now, I'm not feeling a lot of INTJ out of him, but let's let him continue. ...being that... Once you set the value for one, that actually has maybe some surprise effects down the line. Hmm. And, uh, and certainly my growth as a... I, I mean, I think people continue to develop in their temperament talents, and, and just to learn more about systems has itself, you know, biological ones, social ones, um, they all have their quirks and insights, and that's it's good to keep learning about different kinds of systems. Hmm. All right. Um... All right, so I, I would like to then, if you could if maybe connect that to the idea of, in the Intean temperament, of uh, sort of being visionary, um, of being able to sort of uh, have that sort of either foresight or abil ability to project that outward, either a systems or a paradigm kind of view. Um, in what way, so I have two questions. One, how do you, what do you think of the word visionary um, in the way I've described it in, in terms of your life? That's, uh, that's the first one. I have two questions about visionary. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I do think that the, the visioning aspect of it can sometimes happen by accident or just mm -hmm. be inspired or something like that. You know, I didn't start doing brain research because I thought, oh, this is, I'm going to be visionary in this. I mean, that, that's completely, I, I did it because uh, I had some money that I had to spend at the university and it sounded really intriguing and people were bugging me to do it. They're like, Dario, you would be perfect for it. Um, and then somewhere along the way, five years down the road, somebody says, oh, this is a sexy topic. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you know, I sort of stumbled into that. All right, let me pause here at 420. Note that this course of action of his did not originate from a singular vision of any sort. It was opportunism that, he, in the sense that he had money to, that he had to spend or lose in his budget. And he spent it on this because, wow, well, this is what he thought of, or somebody suggested it, or whatever. That doesn't sound like N-I, that sounds like N-E-T-I. Yeah, yeah, it does. He, he's, he's really quite good with F-E. I mean, even at, like, I'm a little further back, but at 202, he, he even remarks on, oh, that's a wonderful question to ask, and, like, reaffirms his conversation partner. I just, I see him using a lot of engaging, smiling, and responsiveness. Mr. Nardi, with all due respect, and I assure you that here the type police we do offer you due respect, I don't want to get in trouble with my superiors, but I'm going to have to ask you now to get out of the car, uh, just sit here on the curb. Uh, Corporal Amber and I need to look at some further footage and uh, be prepared mentally, sir. Use your extroverted intuition to think about the possibilities here. Focus on the reality. Collapse it down to a singular determinate factor. You're likely going to jail tonight. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So he's sitting on the curb now. Amber, let's let him go a little further and see what we see. Uh, don't kick him, okay? We'll get in trouble. This guy's important. I won't kick him. Okay, good. That Certainly there are times in my life where I didn't feel very visionary. I'm like, I don't know what's coming next. Um, I don't want to think about what's coming next, and maybe that's for the best. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah, so it's, it's not like, you know, living in the future all the time or being innovative all the time, um, but uh, I, I certainly don't mind when I'm there. <laughs> so, um, so that leads to my second question. This is a little, uh, you know, maybe more difficult, but um, certainly many people who are into personality type um, see you personally as a visionary. Hmm. Um, how do you feel with that... Um, you know, how do you feel about that role or having that role? This is such a stupid ENFP line of questioning that Dr. Mike's pursuing. How does it feel to be a visionary? Who the fuck cares? It's like, how does it feel to win this game? They ask the sports person after the sports game. You know, the reporter, the lady reporter goes up to him and goes, Tell, how did it feel when that last shot went in and you knew you were going to win? Oh, uh, it. It felt conflicted. I was ambivalent. I I thought, well, we won the game. But on the other hand, my hands are tired. 
I mean, <laughs> really? Why are you asking such a stupid question? And I guess it's revelatory about Nardi and his response and the fact that he's not like... I mean, he's just good at F.E. and not saying, why are you con continuing with this stupid line of questioning? Uh, I'm leaning INTP, but thoughts? Um, no, I've just made some notes. Like, at 4.30, there's the, I don't want to think about what's coming next, which, again, I'm probably a little, just a little bit behind you on the video, but... That's not a knower thing to say. No, it's not. Knowers want to know what's coming next, and NI doms are knowers. This guy doesn't sound like a... If you want to, if you're very comfortable deliberating as new information comes in, in other words, you anticipate that you're not going to have to be have to act at any given moment you'll have time to deliberate about everything then you'd act more like homie here um whereas a no would want to know in advance a deliberator anticipates they're going to have to do deliberation all the time which means they're not going to be knowing in advance so you know it makes sense yeah the the whole kind of stumbling into something and then finding oh it's it's actually kind of sexy the, the idea of, like, how did I arrive here seems a little... It sounds like countervalued NI to me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's let him continue. But, Nardi, you're about to get into the back seat of the car. People saying that. What are your thoughts about it? Gosh, um, I don't know. I, I've never thought about that. I, I'm not sure anybody said that to me. I believe you now that I think about it. <laughs> but, um... <laughs> Uh, you know, it, I, I think a lot of it is, uh, maybe it's a third piece about NTs and, and visioning, and it's that seeing the consequences of things and comparing that to where we could be, potentially, and then say, hey, what will it take to actually get there? Not like, uh, uh, you know, uh, like the Lego movie, Unikitty Land. But, <laughs> <laughs> but but you know how will it re what will it really take to get there? Knowing it's not going to be perfect, but but what's good and and so those things. So for me, I uh, let me pause here at five forty two and just note that that's a a pretty T E frame. How to how am I going to get from A to B? But I don't see that as exclusive of INTP because ignoring T E means you validate external things by ways in which they validate against TE metrics. So it would be natural that that would emerge from his discussion of it if he were an INTP. <coughs> yeah, he did move from talking about seeing potential, but then right away there was that TE of thinking, what are the steps to get there? I think we're actually synced now on where we are. Okay, well, to me, that TE right there sounds like him using fifth slot TE that, to validate what he's doing. Here's how we validate what I'm doing. At the end of the day, I realized, okay, well, but how are we going to get there is the most important thing. And the fact that I thought about that means this thing should be validated externally, as an external by others, because I'm assuming others ought to validate the same uh, fifth slot way that I do. Um, that's, what would you expect from second? Well, second slot TE would be an instrumental value. It would say, uh, it would demonstrate that throughout rather than referencing it as an argument. It would say, it, it would be utilitarian in its justifications throughout. Most of the justifications here, I think, well, the explanation so far hasn't really been a justification. It's just been an explanation, but it's not been utilitarian at all. It's been, I stumbled into it, and it seems sexy, and, and stuff that's absolutely not utility. So the fact that he's validating here against utility, I don't think is consistent with, with second slot in a couple of ways. Second slot's instrumental, so it's not valued in and of itself. When you accomplish things with your tool function, you don't feel particularly satisfied. It's just when you're pre pre prevented from using your tool function to address things, that's going to be very frustrating. But ultimately, you expect yourself to be good at your tool function, so you don't really validate things against it. Um, so, okay, let's let him continue and see what else he has to say. I just felt like in order for type to continue in the 21st century, and it does, it speaks to people and, and it meets their needs, otherwise I don't think it would be popular, um, that that it's going to need to stay up with the times and, mm. and what's going on in neuroscience is where it's at. And that's, um, and that's, uh, so I suppose in that sense, sure. I don't know. I, I fear for anybody who wants to follow me, though, because they might at times find it really boring or slow. 
<laughs> uh, you know, say, oh, wait, I was wrong about that. We have to undo that, whatever that is. Um, but, uh, but then aren't, you know, isn't really any process like that. Oh, well. You know, I'm glad you, you just brought up the Lego movie because I, I saw that movie too with my son. All right, let's scoot ahead like 10 minutes. Okay. Just like, like if they use always, and I'm like, no, it's not always, and it's not even close to always. Like, you can't round it to always even. Why did you even say that? Like, you're just doing it for drama's sake. <laughs> and and uh, I think that's good because it makes sure I don't get sucked into anything I shouldn't. I mean, you know, as, as with any NT. But then I also have to keep my, my mouth shut. Hmm. Ah. So, all right, so what I, what I hear you saying is, is that it um, it's, it allows for better understanding, but it... Am I understand this correctly? But at the same time, you you have to not censor yourself, but restraint. It it, it forces restraint. Yeah, and and sometimes I I believe uh, NTs can come off as really uh, difficult to even have an everyday basic conversation with because every sentence is an opportunity for an argument. I'm not saying I'm like that no. even most of the time, but I when I'm in a bad mood, that's very easy to to go to that place. Are you at eleven seventeen? All right. I just don't see INTJs as defaulting when they don't have their FE turned up a little bit to negating everything and arguing every point. I don't see that as INTJ behavior. What? The talk of accuracy was interesting to me. The the kind of focusing on accuracy of definition. Right. It wasn't and it wasn't empiric. You don't hear him cite empirics as a justification for why we ought believe it. Even he says, "Oh well, it's we ought to move into the twenty first century. We ought to be consistent with current." justification modalities not that empirics are inherently better which is pretty telling too so I mean the other possibility is that he could be an INFP and that's what the tipster suggested he, the tipster said they were getting INFP vibes from him I, it's, the only reason I think it's possible is because uh, TI 8 slot would look a lot like it would make an INFP look a lot like an INTP when they're being questioned about their work like this. If they're doing work of this nature, it's going to be TI validated, not TE, because their 8 slot TI is going to come out and help their FI do all the work, rather than their 4th slot uh, TE, which is very weak. What would you say about his use of FE if, if he were INTJ? Because he, I, I found an article or an Ask Me Anything with him where he's talking about how it's... Sorry, hold, hold on. Kim, Kim can't hear us talking because I got the headphones oh, on. I just the oh, okay. Well, let, let's, let Amber and me finish this, okay? Oh, okay. All right, go ahead, Amber. Uh, all right. I can't find it now, but I found it earlier. Um, he has an, a Reddit AMA, and he's talking about... Because pe there was somebody had co remarked that he really seems to display quite a bit of FE in his interviews. And he was talking about how an INTJ manifests FE. And of course now I can't find it, so I just kind of brought it up for no reason, apparently. Well, he, regardless, he's probably wrong about that, because how an INTJ manifests FE is not really at all. And the, the extent that they do, it's a heuristic imitation of FE. It's not real imitation. I mean, it's not real FE. And just because he's Darwin and Artie doesn't mean he's right about cognitive functions. If he wants to be right about cognitive functions, I think he'd agree with this because he's an INTP or at at least an INFP. He's one of the two. Probably an INTP. I think he'd agree with me that since I'm going to successfully win all these arguments about functions, he should agree with my interpretation of them. I think he'd agree with that. Okay, so he calls it having a stage self. 
Okay, well, that then maybe he's an INFP. They're into having different selves. That's a huge INFP giveaway, but it's not determinate. He's one of the two. Now, an INFP would have good FE because it's their fifth slot ignoring. So just as we saw him, but see, I've seen indications that he's validating with TE, not with FE. So that suggests to me INTP, the fourth slot FE is weak, but aware, and he's, he's right that he's trained it to be more active, but it's conscious so he can do that. He wouldn't be able to do that if he were an INTJ. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the way he talks, I see a lot of TI. Um, just where he seems to put some value. And then it seems like a, um, a lot of NETI and then kind of coming back around and trying to go, okay, why was I doing this? Yeah, he's an interesting character. But listen, we don't need to figure out the man's life story. I think we can clearly substantiate an arrest here. We're not going to get sued for wrongful arrest by any any sane judge is going to side with us on this one. There's ample reason to put this guy in the slammer and at least make sure he has his day in court. So, Corporal Amber, are you with me that we are arresting Mr. Dario Nardi for mistypage um, and he is not an INTJ and we're going to toss him the INTP cell for right now and if he turns out to be an INFP, our bad. Yeah. Uh. Can I, can I be part of the witness protection program if it gets dicey? If it gets dicey, listen, that's why we give you, we usually refer to you, I forgot to do it this time, but it, don't worry. We usually refer to you by your undercover name, which is Clarence, <laughs> Clarence Thomas. We named you after the Supreme Court <laughs> judge. Uh. That's good. And so that way, if people don't know your real name is Amber, and after this video, for sure, I'll remember to, to reference you as Clarence. Oh. But So after the dangerous situation, I'm clearly involved in it, then... <laughs> well, hopefully nobody's watching this part of the video. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's likely. Probably true. All right, so, Dario Nardi, it's time for me to get out my favorite link here. And... I don't know, maybe I'm a little sadistic, but it's the prison cell doors closing. Here you go, buddy. Here you go, Mr. Nardi. I know, it's it's your worst day. Uh, we get to see people on their worst day. Ooh, that sounds decisive, that slam. Wait, here it comes again. Uh, first slam means you're in jail, second slam means you're in the INTP wing impersonating an INTJ. Pretty common error, pretty common crime, but uh, not one we're going to let go unpunished. Amber, any last words before I push the theme song? Uh, no, I don't know who you're talking about. There's no Amber here. I mean, here. Clarence. Clarence Thomas. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> not related <laughs> no, to the Supreme no. Court judge, just coincidental <laughs> that you have the same name. Just, I guess, remember to eat plenty of cheese. That's a good observation. Thank you for making it. Okay, with that observation, I'm going to push the theme song, and then we'll end this video. Thanks for watching. Sergeant, host Eric, and Corporal Amber out. Try as you might. You just can't hide. Because you're mistyped. And I've been waiting to pull you over all night. Type police.